In the last video for Chinese Film Classics, we talked about the history of sound film in China and about the sound design in the film Street Angels, focusing on the leading lady Zhou Xuan, her character, the songstress Xiao Hong, and the scenes in which she sings her two songs, Song of the Four Seasons and Songstress at the Ends of the Earth. The songs in Street Angels are about more than just a pair of lovers and the social pressures preventing their happiness. This is indicated in part by the battlefield images we see the first time that Xiao Hong sings Song of the Four Seasons. Japan had been encroaching on Chinese territory since the late 19th century, and even more aggressively since 1931, when it invaded China's northeast. The visual montage that we see as we hear Xiao Hong singing Song of the Four Seasons alludes to this conflict, even as sound and image work together to personalize the war by turning into the backstory of a girl singing of romantic longing. Shortly after Street Angels was made, China declared war against Japan, following a military skirmish outside of Beijing in July of 1937. Shortly thereafter, the Japanese army invaded Shanghai. The war destroyed or dispersed most of the Shanghai film industry. 1937 also marked a turning point from urban consumer culture to national resistance culture in China. Street Angels, which has us listening to the songstress while seeing images of war, is a film that represents this epochal moment. Yuan Muzhi, like many other socially minded artists of his day, used sound, both actual sound and the idea of sound, to convey social and political criticism. Chinese filmmakers appealed to audiences' tastes by allowing them to listen to pleasing melodies, but they also use sound to encourage them to think in other ways. Leftist critics of the 1930s advocated that literary and artistic production strive for what they called phonographic realism. This concept held that art should act like a phonograph, recording reality and then playing it back to a broad audience with precision and clarity. The concept combined two ideas, that art should be faithful to reality and not distort it, and that art should take advantage of the broadcast power of mass media technologies to spread ideology. Throughout Street Angels, Yuan Muzhi uses arresting sound design. This is a film set to music. The credits are accompanied by a dizzying orchestral piece. Three minutes in, we see and hear the rattle of a snare drum, followed by a marching band and the sound of celebrants shouting out at a bridal parade on the streets of Shanghai. The sound of this brings us right into a scene of daily life. The opening montage sequence also establishes a strong acoustic theme, which develops throughout the film, from Zhou Xuan's solos to various other sounds. One acoustic theme is the idea of a refrain. The songstress at the center of Street Angels is a war orphan who moves to a new home only to be harmed anew. She sings a lament for herself and for her loved one and for her homeland. Her play is presented as being analogous to that of China, which had long struggled in vain to free itself from exploitation. We see images of armed conflict and, in a later scene, actually see a headline about invasion and imperialist domination. Another theme is the idea of silence or muteness, of the inability to speak or to be heard. I mentioned phonographic realism, but pop ballads, of course, can be sentimental, melodramatic, or romanticized. They tend to favor emotional or psychological realism. The songstress at the ends of the earth sings plaintively of a tragic female figure who could be taken to be a stand-in for the lower classes of Shanghai in general. Street Angels follows in the footsteps of other leftist films of the 1930s too, which represent the plight of marginal and underprivileged figures in society through attractive female leads. In order to generate public sympathy for them and propel progressive social change, Filmmakers did not hesitate to diverge from realism and to add heartstring-tugging songs. Xiao Hong is an acoustic character not just because she's a singer, but also because she's something of a frustrated listener. She strains to hear what is being communicated to her from across the window on the other side of the alley where Xiaoping lives. She is also frustrated by what she hears from her adoptive parents, who treat her as a mere commodity to be exploited and sold. Eavesdropping propels the plot in several scenes, notably when Xiao Hong overhears the plan to sell her to Mr. Gu. That's when she decides to move out in secret. Xiaoping, Xiaoyun, and even the three Stooges characters from the barbershop 
could also be considered acoustic characters because of how they are defined through sounds. Xiaohong summons Xiaoping by using what they call the wireless wu xian dian of a mirror to shine light on the window covering of their apartment. He signals his presence in response by playing his trumpet, which is dubbed rather than live recorded sound. Often she hears him, as sometimes we do, before she sees him. The three underemployed barbers are buffoonish figures who appear mostly for comic relief. They're inarticulate. They mostly mug and grimace and cross their eyes, but they do make noise, as when Xiaoping strikes their heads like drums, complete with sound effects. One of these three men has a severe stutter. Stutters and mutes and individuals with other disabilities were stock butts of humor in early 20th century China. They were as familiar to audiences as the quack doctor who appears in Laborer's Love. The man can barely get a word out, and Xiaoping repeatedly interrupts him with some variation of the admonition, if you can't speak, then don't speak. Xiaoping repeats the phrase virtually every time the stutterer tries to speak, such that the exchange becomes something of a running joke. On the occasion of Xiaoping's marriage with Xiao Hong, one of the other stooges finally reproaches Xiaoping, reminding him that on this happy occasion, he should give the man a chance to finish a sentence for once. By the end of the film, the phrase seems to mock all of these characters who lack a voice in deciding their fate. Xiao Yun, the sister who remains silent, actually dies. Should they not speak and risk a similar fate? And if they don't or can't speak, who should speak for them? These illiterate and inarticulate characters could be taken metaphorically as standing in for an entire class of people who do not fully understand what is going on around them. In an early scene, the group wants to write down a slogan of solidarity, sharing prosperity and difficulty together. Unfortunately, none of them can remember how to write the character Nan for difficulty. Wang, the newspaper seller, finds the character Nan in a newspaper article pasted on their wall, which mentions the calamity China currently faces due to invasion by the imperialist enemy, meaning the Japanese. The headline reads, the nation faces difficulties, so everyone must stand up and take responsibility. Like in films such as Sun Yu's Daybreak and Little Toys, Street Angels represents the lives of the urban underclass as essentially tragic comedy. Part tragedy, part comedy, but with a comedy as a foil to the tragedy. Xiaoping's foreign soldier uniform, for example, which has only a patch of fabric for a shirt, illustrates his poverty. His magic tricks to amuse Xiao Hong show us that he really has nothing up his sleeve because he barely has sleeves. For his last trick at the wedding banquet, he appears to pop a silver coin out of his mouth, Chu Ko, and Wang gives him a title for that trick from yesterday's newspaper headline, Massive Exports, Chu Ko, of Silver This Past Month, referring to the capital flight from China. The nationalist government at that time was trying to prevent this bleeding by outlawing transactions in anything other than their own paper currency. And Xiaoping discovers this the next time he tries to pay the rent with a foreign dollar. The earlier set piece in the lawyer's office is part of this economic parable. Xiaoping and Wang think they've actually gone up to heaven because everything in this lawyer's office is so clean. But they soon discover that heaven also has a high price tag and it will be impossible for them to save their friend through a lawsuit. The scene, played as something of a country bumpkin farce, underscores the well-meaning pair's ignorance and poverty. These are the unfortunates of society, and the happiness they experience tends to be fleeting. Near the end of the film, the barbers get the satisfaction of giving their evictor a ridiculous haircut, but they still get evicted. Shortly before Xiao Hong moves in with them, her friends across the alley put on a dumb show for her. They appear as backlit shadows punching their fists into the air as a swelling musical soundtrack suggests principled struggle and triumph. Yet this is only mimicked heroism. At their unofficial improvised marriage ceremony, Xiaoping borrows a friend's earring and puts it on Xiao Hong's finger as a wedding ring. This too is something of a mimicry of marriage rites. Xiao Yun, a mute character, is also defined through such ironic allegory. One night, Xiaoping is entertaining Xiao Hong with spooky ghost stories. And just as he is telling about the ghost's approach, Xiao Yun bursts in through the door. The timing suggests that Xiao Yun's nocturnal life mimics that of a ghost, 
On the dark streets, she is always just one step away from being apprehended by the police. Like the earlier scene in the lawyer's office, these scenes illustrate Street Angel's preference for staging dramatic irony over prescribing political solutions. Street Angels ends abruptly with the death of the songstress's sister, Xiaoyun. Her friends gather by her deathbed and agree that there is nothing to be done. The film presents a communal plight, but it offers no clear answers as to how to solve the problems of these individuals, much less those besetting the nation, which it refers to only obliquely. The tone is one of lament rather than a radical call to action or a cri de cour like the exclamation that bursts from Wei Ming's mouth on her deathbed in New Women, I want to live. Xiaoyun's dying words, ants, ants, seems to refer not just to her friends, but to all the little people. They scurry around, but no one hears them, and they only get trampled underfoot. We cut to a shot from outside the room, looking at the ensemble through a window frame that resembles the bars of a birdcage or perhaps of a prison. For all of the song and clamor in Street Angels, a film made on the eve of war, its ending is decidedly and deliberately muted.